What's going on, everybody? We are the two bright guys. I go by DJ Composition. And I am his co-host, the youngest, a.k.a. Just G. Just G? Yeah, I, I, I ain't nobody you just, you just Nobody go younger than me today, so I can be back to being the youngest. No, nobody younger than me today. <laughs> so Why? listen, we're going to unpack some things today. We got some special guests in the building, and we're going to talk about some serious topics that's going on. So... Without further ado, we're just going to get right into it. We'd like to introduce our guests, so let them introduce themselves. Mic check, one, two, one, two. We got... Ida from the Grand Rapids Human Trafficking Working Commission. Leslie King from Sacred Beginnings Women's Transitional Program. All right, so today we're going to dive and peel back some layers on the world of human trafficking, what it looks like, and... um. Let's just get let's just get to it. So so Ida, let's let's talk about the 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 working commission and, and the things that you've already been working on and, and trying to accomplish. So the Grand Rapids Human Trafficking Working Commission is literally a group of people from very different fields. We've got some real estate agents, we've got social workers, we've got just community c- citizens, um, myself in the legal field, uh, and the whole goal is to bring these people together to talk about how we can project awareness into the community about what is happening here in Grand Rapids and in West Michigan with regards to human trafficking. Um, Our main focus is really things like our prize last year. We had a booth at our prize giving out magnets with the hotline number on it, talking about red flags, what to look for, so that when you identify these things, you know what action to take, which is who you call. Um, The great thing about the group is that we don't have a budget. We are all volunteers. We all come with our own expertise that can help in this field. And we've done, um, I feel like, a fairly good job at making sure that the right communities are aware of what's happening. And I think that's part of the misconception is people target a certain community all the time and don't realize this is a bigger problem, much bigger problem than what we think it is. So So just a a quick, um, for for people who are kind of ignorant to the topic, what is human trafficking? Um, there's there's different levels of it. Yes. Um, primarily, when we talk about um, sex trafficking, we're looking at minors, anyone under the age of 18. The biggest misconception is people assume that when they realize that or this person gets convicted for something and they're over 18, they don't question how long they've been doing this, right? Okay. They don't realize that these this individual could have been trafficked for many years before they hit their legal age and now they're they're in this environment that they don't really know any different from so um i'll definitely let leslie talk a little bit more about what what could constitute as it but it is a wide range legally it's the conception that anyone who's under the age of 18 being prostituted is solicited so leslie yes let's get to it let's let's um unpack some things what brought you to working with this group and from the sounds of it you have your own organization as well so can you un- unpack that for us yes i am um, they call it human trafficking and sexual exploitation mm-hmm. i call it pimping and pandering because that's what it is okay mm-hmm. then you got pimping and pat okay we got slavery you got pimping and pandering then you got human trafficking sexual exploitation same meaning, different names. They just they just dressed it up. They just dressed it up. Oh, you really you want me to go there with that one? Let's, okay. So slavery started with bringing the uh, bringing um, Africans over here to mm-hmm. build America. That was slavery. Then we got pimping and pandering, which is the ne- which is which holds a negative connotation for the black man because that's what they'll say. Right. But okay. then you come with this human trafficking, sexual exploitation, which the white man put that out there so they can repimp white collar pimping is what I call it. Okay survivors for our stories that way they can they can um go for grants you know and different things like that Mm. so you got them coming out the woodwork gotcha um i am a survivor a lived experience expert as i would say and i was in that life over 20 years Mm. and i was pimped out here in grand rapids at the age of 15 Mm. you know what i'm saying and um You have people who, you got people who motives are pure and you got people who motives aren't pure. Um, The Grand Rapids Task Force with Sunita Lanier and 
Ida and all the rest of the people on that task force, um, as a survivor, I'm very comfortable with them because I know what they're doing. And I, you know what I'm saying? I know right. what they're about. And I know they're into um, stopping this and helping survivors and bringing awareness. Um, they say um, under 18, under 18, um, I'm over half a century. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What about women like me? Right. You know what I'm saying? You can't leave us out. You know what I'm saying? Because it started with us. And my thing is, there's a few of us who's still out there, who mm -hmm. traps, who's still trapped in the game. So what I do is I'm I'm trying to help these women so they don't go back and 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 pimp out the other ones because how can you do something different if you don't know how? Right. Yeah. You know, when I got away from my pimp after so many years, I was still stuck in the game. Because I didn't know nothing different. Yes. This is all I knew. You know, the hustle was all I knew. Right. So people was like, why didn't you leave? How could I leave? I didn't know other way. You know, I didn't know what, I didn't know any other way but what I was taught. So I stayed in the game. I mean, uh, being kidnapped, being held hostage, being beat. And my mind at that time was part of life. You know what I mean? Right. And you just get up and you go back, you get up and you go back. It wasn't an abnormal up. thing. No, that it was, was just, no. It was just a daily thing. It was just a daily thing. You know what I'm saying? It was just a daily thing. But then people have to understand that many of us that's caught up in the game, we have issues. We have some serious issues and unknown issues, uh, you know, um, unknown traumas that 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 even lead us to a pimp, like daddy issues. We right. have all these issues that keep us stuck off into the game. Mm -hmm. And what people understand, it's easier for me to stay out in the game than it is for me to sit up here and talk with people because, see, I don't know what you might think about me. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for me to go back into the night. Than it was. It's yeah. a comfort zone. Yeah. It's yeah. comfort. It's there you, you go. I've, 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 all my life, I've been comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I stayed in it. But now I've been out of it. I've been out the game, clean and sober now for 19 years and started Sacred Beginnings really in 2003, but solidified in 2007. Um, Can you talk about Sacred Beginnings a little sacred bit? Sacred Beginnings is a home for women who've been, as they say, trafficked, but who've been out in the game. You right. know what I'm saying? Um, and we offer these women a safe place. Um, we offer them healing. You know what I'm saying? And how to reprogram them reprogram themselves to do the next right thing. Right. You can do it. You know what I'm saying? And if they see Leslie doing it, then it's like if Leslie can do it, then I can do it. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um we have two homes and both are full. Mm -hmm. And I speak on um pimping and pandering throughout the state of Michigan. Um and I've been doing a lot of traveling out of the state of Michigan educating. So I'm God is good. You're putting it all together. Mm -hmm. Laying it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Laying it down. So so what was the what was the point where you you got to where it was like, you know what, I'm done. Because like you said, you were comfortable being uncomfortable for so long because you didn't know anything else. What was that defining moment where it was like, you know what? I gotta make a change because this is not for me. July fourth of two, July fourth of two thousand, I tried to commit suicide. Um, I was tired, you know. I, I, I mean, I was beaten. I was tired, and the thing with that is, is that we get high, so we don't have to think and we don't have to feel. Right. See, people understand there's cause and effects to everything. You see the effect, but take time to find out the cause. You know, little, little girl wakes up and said they want to be a drug addict and, and, and be sold on the street. You know what happened? Um, for me, being molested, uh, dysfunctional home, all that. Um, but July 4th of 2000, the dope wasn't doing it. Relationships wasn't doing it. I was tired. And women like me from the streets, if Johns don't kill us, pimps don't kill us, we kill ourselves. Mm. And I tried to commit suicide because, see, to me, there was no God. Because if there was, why me? Why not somebody else? Why me? Right. But I remember, um, I remember dying. I remember that. 
I remember my heart just stopping, you know what I mean, pumping real slow. I remember that. And with the last breath that I had, I screamed out, if there's a God in heaven, help me, man. Just help me. And it's hard for me to describe to people what I felt at that time. Because, see, you got to understand, my family back then, they was all gangsters. You know what I'm saying? So this is what I was raised around. Right. So, but for me to feel that warmth and that hug was something I never felt before. But I knew I was going to be okay. And I put myself in treatment. Then I put myself in a place called Rose Haven with them nuns. That's a whole different story, me and them nuns. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I promise you it is. But I stayed in that program, and I fought my I fought my tail off, man, to work on that little girl. You know what I'm saying? To work on them issues of of being biracial, of being a dysfunctional, of 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 not being daddy's little girl, not having the hugs and the I love. I had to work on all of that, and it wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't easy. It was either face my demons or let my demons face me. Right. And mm-hmm. I got tired of them dealing with me. Um. So I stayed in that program. I graduated that program after a year and became the first ever resident to become a staff. Oh, wow. Mm. And next thing you know, um, I'm helping women. And then they had a program called SWAP, which was Social Work and Police Partnership. I got hired by the Grand Rapids Police Department. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) Now I bet that was that was <laughs> that knock on the door was Something different. You never thought that that yeah. was a that was a challenge in its difference. <laughs> when they said Leslie, we would like to speak with you, I was like, "What? what? <laughs> I'm not going down there to the police. I'm just like, um, they didn't find a body with my fingerprints on it. <laughs> just all, all kind of negative stuff. And I remember reading uh, uh, literature that day, and it kept saying, faith, faith. I was like, Jesus, you go holler at them and come back and tell me what they want. Because I promise you I ain't going. Right. <laughs> but I'll never forget Lieutenant Ralph Mason. That's a different story with me and him, too, because I gave him a run for his money for 20 years. I promise you I did. Um, hired me, and he believed in me. And I had an office at the Grand Rapids Police Department working and being a mentor to these same women I used to get high with and stand on the corner with, going into the same jails that used to lock me up. I mean, same institution, same everything. Um, riding with police that used to arrest me. I mean, I wasn't getting in the back. When they first said, let you got riding police, because do what? Right. I'm not. I didn't know I'm not. But here I am riding in the front of the police car with this police officer. And then all of a sudden, he's like, Leslie, what just, can you tell me, why did you get into this? And when I told him my, li- my life story, here this big grown man he is crying. And it hit, it dawned on me. They're trained one way, then I'm trained mm-hmm. another way. Right. So we boom. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of them became my friends and my allies. You know what I'm saying? Once they understood and then I understood. Right. So we were able to get out there. The police actually got out there, was taking women to court, was buying their children clothes. You know, Mm -hmm. everything just flipped. Um, Harry Dolan at that time was chief of police. And I loved him dearly because he cared about women like me. And that helped empower me to become more and want more and right. do more and just get it out the mud for real, but get it out in a positive way. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. And that's what I continue to do against all odds. So let me ask you this, because mm-hmm. I know you you kind of were describing when you made the change and mm-hmm. was going in mm-hmm. to speak to the same women that you were getting mm-hmm. high with and going to jail with. Right. How were you received from them initially? Because I know sometimes when you make a change... Some people may look at you, you know, like, let me mm-hmm. put you up to the light to see if this is the real deal or or what what game you play. Treat you differently. The courts is the one that treated me different mm. because when I went in front of the judge and told him who I was, he looked at me and shut the court down for real and thought I had a warrant. He couldn't believe it was me. Oh wow! But the women, they were in awe. You know what I'm saying? Because even though my life has changed. I'm still Leslie. I'll never change. I'm still off this block. You know what I'm saying? I'm still off these streets. Right. Nothing about me and never change. You know what I'm saying? 
the less that you see now, the less that you will see on the street. This is less you will see in front of 500 people. I say the same. But what they did was they embraced it a lot more because it was somebody just like them. And you, you know understood I mean? you understood the experiences and, and the struggle. And it's something about survivors. We 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 connect like that because we have the same lived experiences, the same pain. Right. And I was that liaison between the women, social workers, and the police department. Because social workers were like police mm -hmm. to us. So we're not talking to them. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're gonna give they you gonna a relay that message anyway. Yeah. Right. We're gonna mm -hmm. give you just a little bit so you can get out of our face, but we ain't finna talk to you. Mm -hmm. But I was advocating in the courtrooms and legal arenas. You know what I'm so and social service agency. I was there advocating for them women. I still am. So it, it made it to where they will call me, even if they just want to talk. They can be standing on the corner. They're not ready to lead a life. They just need to hear me, right? And let them know it's okay. No matter what, I'm gonna meet you where you are, and I'm gonna love you until you can love yourself. How about that? You know, mm -hmm. and 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 we have that bond. You know, and they do that to this day. So when they see me coming and I'm out because I do outreach on the street, I stop handing blessed bags, but I don't stop their money because that's what they doing. You know what I'm saying? But I want them to know that no matter what, I got you when you're ready. Right. Because and that usually, means a lot. Because usually people um, can't stop until they're ready. You, right. You can't force right. them. No matter no. what. No matter right. how long you right. try, right. How, how much you beat right. into them. And, so you, right. and you've been on that side. Right. So you had a good method. So let me ask you, how did you... Uh, how were you received by the women who couldn't necessarily relate to you in their life? Because I know with uh, human trafficking is the is the the, the whitewash word and mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm, pimping and pandering. Mm -hmm, I know there are some girls who still don't understand what they're going through and they kind of don't relate to that. You know, it's the same across all races. Right, 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 some right, people think okay, like right. you know. So how did you? How were you received by the women who kind of uh, did understand the depth of what they were in? You get you have women who don't understand that that they're out there and they're they don't understand that they being pimped. They really mm -hmm. don't. Mm. They really have this in their mind that they doing it because they want to do it and blah blah blah. But that's negative because see, it's easier to think this way than it is to think the reality. You yeah. understand right. because reality hurts. So if I say uh, I'm doing it because I want to do it, what I'm really doing is blocking everything else. You know what I'm saying? Because it hurts. Mm -hmm. I keep coming. You know, I ain't going to stop. I'm mm -hmm. not going to blame them, and I'm not going to sit there and say, well, you're pimp this, you're pimp that, because if I say stuff like that, all that's going to do drive is, is drive them mm -hmm. further. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just keep going, and I just keep going, and I just keep coming with love, and I just keep coming with open being honest. And then they wind up going to jail eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and when that fog lift, then they want to see Leslie. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Right. And and I, I'm i game savvy. So I know you want to see me because you want to get out of jail. Right. That ain't finna happen. But now that you, now that, that dope didn't clear and I can talk to you. Let's that, have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. You know what I'm saying? But once you plant that seed, you give them something to think about. Right. They can't put no dope on that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. Now you're going, back to, you're going back in that cell. You can't put no dope on that. So what you finna do is that seed is finna be planted and you're going to slowly think. Mm -hmm. And you're going to keep thinking. And the pain is going to get great enough eventually and you're going to want to do something different. That's deep. Have you ever ran into uh, a lady or a woman that was a pimp? Oh, Bottoms? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know bottoms, bottoms but, but but ladies who didn't have any association with the man, so they were just. This is the reality. Somebody taught them. You mm -hmm. just don't wake up and say, "Guess what? I'm going to do this today." No, mm. that you taught. You right. know what I'm saying? You taught. Um, I was a bottom. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't by choice. See, people have that that thing about bottoms too. That they're this and they're no, they're not. If the women don't do what they're supposed to do, the the bottom is gonna get beat. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I was the bottom, I um, took a lot of them to the bus station and was like, you finna get on this bus, you finna go home, you better not come back to Grand Rapids or such and such will happen when I see you. Mm -hmm. I had to. And next thing you know, when my man asked me where they at, I'd be like, they got in a trick car and didn't come back. Next thing you know, I'm finna get beat due to the fact that I should have known where they were. You know, um... But that's all right. They're safe. Um, the women you have out there now that's preying on the younger ones, 
Them, Where did they get that from, though? Yeah, you know, they got it from. Yeah. yeah. So now they, and then a lot of them too old to go out there, and so they go, they're going to go after the young ones to go out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and it's just like a chain reaction. It just keeps going. Keeps going. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, then a lot of them hooked on them drugs now. So who better to sell than somebody young? You got women selling their own kids. Right. Mm. You know that's happening. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever ran into a woman that you put on the bus and you met her in a different capacity in life? You know what? It's funny you ask me that. Um, somebody reached out to me two months ago um, on Facebook, and she said, Leslie, thank you. And I'm like, thank me for what? Oh, <laughs> I'm lost. You know, I'm like, huh? Right. And then when she brought up the incident of when I took her to the bus station and who she was and what I said and what I did, I couldn't do nothing but cry. You know what I'm saying? This lady has a degree. She's married. She has children. You know what I mean? She's thriving. She's doing good. But she happened to see me speak somewhere, and she didn't approach me. She took my card and contacted me once I left, you know, and she she brought that back to my um, attention. And all I could say was grace be to God. That's all I could say. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's all I could say. And yeah, you changed the whole trajectory of her life. Correct. Well, her it's generational. She got kids now, and right. she's married. Right. That right. Those kids, those kids will have kids, and they would never know who saved their grandmother's lives. And right. the things that we don't connect those things right. to. Right. And that's the right. big thing is that we have we have so much ability to change the trajectory of people's lives, mm-hmm. yeah. and we don't mm-hmm. take it. Mm-hmm. Um, Leslie and I were just speaking earlier. We've got these young people mm-hmm. being used for service, mm-hmm. and then when when they are getting arrested, they're then being used to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. snitch on their pimp or their trafficker, mm-hmm. and they're not being given anything in return. They're not being they're given being counseling. Put back out in the street. Right. They're not being right. given counseling. They're not being given treatment. They're not given a safe home. That's up to everyone else to find those things for them, right? right. So we we continue to do that, right? Yeah. And like. Not everyone has the ability, like Leslie does, right? I can't get on boots on the ground out there. They're not going to talk to me. They're not going to come up to me on the street and have a safe, comfortable conversation. She has that power. She has that ability. She's literally creating survivors, right? And we don't all have that, but we can do it in other ways, which is making sure we're educated, knowing what the red flags are, knowing what to look for, making sure that our school systems are bringing training into the schools so the students can learn. And that was going to be my next question for you. Uh, What are the red flags? What are we looking for? So a lot of it has to do with some things that Leslie had said, right? There's a emotional thing there, right? It's it's an emotional connection. And that emotional connection can come from financial support and it can, can just come from emotional connection, right? If you didn't have someone at home that took care of you, and now someone out here is willing to take care of you, you're like, wow, I've never had that before. I want it. So you run through a wall for that person. Right, right. And you're willing to do anything because that feeling that you get in return is great. And I think that applies to everyone, you know, in any situation, right? You're looking for something that you're lacking. And so in our communities, we have a lot of colleges. We have a lot of people coming here on very minimal financial support. Right. Yeah. Right. They're away from their families for the first time. Right. And they don't know anyone. They don't know who the dangers are. Right. They don't know the never community. Never been on their own either. They've never been on their own. And they don't have that kind of family support, even if it's just your friends. Right. Yeah. These are new friends to them. So we've got a lot of that. Mm. We have a lot of businesses that come into our community. Right. We all, I think everyone in this room has been to an event at a hotel. Right? I didn't think about that college right. aspect either. Mm-hmm. Right. And and when we're at these hotels, are we looking for red flags? Are we looking for young girls nope. leaving rooms? No, because we're all too busy enjoying our own. Well, you think if somebody leaving a room, it's supposed to be there. Right. But if that girl's right. looking very young and yeah. she's dressed as though she's older, mm-hmm. that's a red flag. Right. right. And if you see that same girl in the lobby or even young boy, right, in the lobby on a regular basis, that's a red flag. Right. Yeah. These are all things that like. That's why we we bring people from different areas, right? Real estate agents. They're in houses on a day-to-day basis, Mm. right? They see things that we can't. Right. Right? Um, Cable guy. Yeah. If you walk into a house and you see doors that lock on the outside of a bedroom, right? Like padlocks on the top and stuff like that. That's a red flag. Those are simple things that we, like, 
we don't recognize on the day-to-day because we're not looking for it. And that's where we as just general civilians, right, we can't get on the ground and, and connect the way Leslie can. But we can support her by giving her that awareness that we can give the community and allowing the community to help with the other parts, right? The things that we could have changed the trajectory and we did, we chose not to. Right. I think people ain't think it's just kidnapping. People yeah, it's not that Kmart, I always say it's not the Kmart parking lot situation where they're just yeah. showing up and they're throwing your kids into right. a car. Yeah, yeah. right. Not, I mean, that's an aspect right, of it. Right, but, but it's not that way anymore. It's so, and, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. Leslie, but to me, it's so simple. We have social media that allows us to that's, connect. Yeah. And yeah. that's where I was going to yeah. go. Right. That's we, social media. The, age, right. of, the age of the internet and social media. Right. And I remember, right. like, I'm in my 30s, and I remember when I was younger, you couldn't have a computer in your bedroom, right? Yeah. You weren't allowed to do that because we were we were so scared of these things. Now it's like, oh, well, we've got all these safety mechanisms, and we can trust them. You can't. And social anybody, media, yeah. it's easy. Anyone can be whoever they want to yeah. be. Right. And profile, they can groom yeah. you to a point where when you realize who they are, you're stuck. You have no way out because now, you, yeah. now you've invested. There's an emotional investment, right? There. Yeah, and, and like got, Leslie was saying about the tr- early traumas before you even get to that point. Because mm-hmm. right. if you get to talking about that on social media, somebody can say, "Okay, like, you know, my dad's not here, or I don't have a father, or you know." And then um, I think address those issues. Somebody on, online people can are looking easily, for your weaknesses, yeah, right? Yeah, and we're trying to be vulnerable as a society because mm-hmm. we're pushing that vulnerability as a good thing, and it's not a bad thing. Yeah. But we also have to be aware of the risks that vulnerability brings because it does make you somewhat of a target in a sense, right? Mm-hmm. Because Correct. it's an easy trajection. Correct. So what are, well, you were, you were given some of the signs. Um, what should parents look for um, in protecting their daughters and, and sons too? Because I was mm-hmm. going to ask, so I know that there's probably situations where there are men being pimped out or, yep. Yep. or situations yep. where, you know, boys grow up to be, you know, um, I've, I don't know. Okay, this may be an ignorant, an ignorant question, but do women buy prostitutes as well? Yep. I mean, prostitution is the oldest, oldest profession. profession. I, mean, I mean, but right. like, like, do they buy like men or? Why wouldn't they? Well, the question is, when you think about prostitution, are you just thinking about tender, right? Like, it's not about a money transaction always. There is different aspects. So, in in situations, yeah. someone can offer you a roof over your head, right, and then mm. ask you for something in return. And if you don't have anything other than yourself you to offer, go, yeah. right? Yeah, that's and it. And you have no other roof to go to. And I don't think I don't think people really consider that when it's a man. I don't think most people outside looking in they don't think that that's prostitution or that's some type of manipulation. It's like, oh, he's just broke. He's using her for you know. But they, she offered him in, got him in a situation, got him comfortable, and then okay, yeah. And so. comfort can come in different ways, right? You could come into that situation addicted, or you can come into that switch situation and become addicted, right? Right. Yeah. And that's right, a control right. mechanism. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So when you've got a population of people, regardless of gender, age, you know, economic background, you know, education, everyone is vulnerable to different points. And mm-hmm. and the easy vulnerable points are poverty, mm-hmm. right? Emotional connection, homelessness, yeah. addiction. Right? We're talking, let's say, the LGBT community, yes. right? That's a huge community that a couple years ago weren't being treated the same, yeah. right? Even their own family members were disconnecting from them. Yeah. How many how many members of the LGBT community do we end up on the street that are now a target? Right? Yeah. So there is there is a lot there's a large target. There's a lot of the red flags. I think as as the regular day to day stuff is you're looking for change in behavior, right? You're you're asking questions of where did you get that? Where did that new phone come from? Where did the new purse come from? Where did those new Jordans come from, right? Yeah. Right. Because there's no kid out here is going to be able to afford the things that they're going to show off. And yeah. the question becomes, where did the money come from? Yeah. Because it's an easy approach, right? The kid's sitting out at the park. My phone screen's cracked. Someone shows up and says, hey, I can get you a new phone. Get them a new phone. Now they've created a relationship. Right. Three months in, that relationship is deeper. Right now he's fighting with his parents. Now he's got a crash on this person's couch. So it's like the the predator play, is playing the long game. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, because I'm, the long game is a further investment. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm, so the first couple of times you come over, I'm not going to try anything, do anything because I want to get you reeled in. Um, and then and that's just one way, right? Like yeah. I mean, not every scenario turns out that way, but I'm just giving you like the example of of where where we can really be asking questions. That can get, that can give us information that we can realize what's actually happening, right? And anyone's so, any young adult. So Leslie, you mm-hmm. say that 
you got introduced to the game about 15, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like what she was just saying, no one started act, no one inquired or asked you questions about what was going on, or it was just kind of like you were on your own. I was a 15 year old runaway. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was 15 year old runaway and was approached and um, was like, let me take you out to eat. Why are you crying? And blah, blah, blah. Um, so we go out to eat, and th- th- I had no reason to be alarmed. I didn't feel alarmed. And this person is asking me questions about my family and da 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 da. Now, mind you, I'm a 15 year old runaway, so I'm angry. I'm hurt. Everything is going wrong. So he's asking me these questions, and I'm answering the questions. So it was like what he was doing was job sit, interview. Was sit there like a job interview mm-hmm. right. and learn my every weakness, you know what I'm saying? To use against you. Whatever I needed, like the I love you, see, um, uh, uh, um, intimacy. Intimacy, and when people say intimacy, they think sex, and sex is not always intimacy. No, that's not always intimacy. That's not intimacy. And then this person dropped me off at my friends, then come pick me up, and then take me to buy me clothes, and we riding up and down the stroll, and going to bars, and this person is like, I love you, da 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 made me feel safe, mind you, because when I was a child, I didn't feel safe. I was molested at eight by a cousin, you know, father alcoholic. And this is the thing. My father used to beat my mother half to death, but she never left him. So when my pimp used to beat me and he had tell me he loved me, I remember that was a trigger back mm-hmm. to what what, what what I seen as a child. You right. know what I'm saying? So that made sense to me. And that's crazy you say that. I read uh, Mike Tyson's book. He said the same thing. Mm-hmm. Right. His mother used to beat her boyfriends, mm-hmm. and so he thought they always would come back. So he thought that's what that's what, that's what he is. got it from. He right. said my mother used to throw hot water on these guys. We only right. define things based on what we experience. There right? you go. And um, um, so next thing you know, um. I go to his friend's house after the, after the bar like we usually do. No reason to be alarmed. But when I come to his friend having sex with me any way he wanted. And this man who I loved and supposed to have been my everything looked at me like dirt under his shoe and said, bitch, get my money. I was only 15, you know. So everything he bought me all the time, he was with me, um, whatever he did or said, I owed. Mm-hmm. See, that's 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 pimping. Mm-hmm. You know, that's right. pimping. Um, as soon as I opened that door to get in, I was on the clock. Mm-hmm. You know, I was on the clock. Nowadays, soon as one of them girls take a rock or a heroin or whatever they drug of choice is, it's over. See, it's over. It's Same hooked. gang. Yeah. The, the, mm-hmm. the, the hustle just different. Right. Because see, back in my day, you better not get high. You know what I'm saying? Back in my day, you we had a quota. And if we didn't make that quota, we'd be out there until we made it. Right. You better not get high. You better not be caught in a bar. You better not be caught out of pocket. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know what they're doing nowadays, is it? <laughs> There's a whole new crew going around. <laughs> so, that, 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 so what's going on now? Do you have to adjust your approach? Because, you, you know, like you said, you're from an era where it's, I hate to put like, you from an era where it's different structure. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. You know, it was different, right. hierarchy, you know, different was structure, different, the lingo's different, yep. and yep. the era was different, yep. too. Like yep. you say, yep. drugs yep. nowadays are somewhat cool mm-hmm. to the kids. And your era, like you said, getting high while you were doing that uh, was not cool. Right. It was bad business. Um, yeah. But eventually, when I got away from him, I started doing the dope um, because I didn't have to think and I didn't have to feel. It was know, an escape. It was a way. For, yeah, there, there you go. It was a way to escape. And, you know, it's funny because, see, people say victims, victims, victims. <laughs> there was a time I was a victim, but then there was a time I was predatory. Mm, right. You know what I'm saying? My hustle game was, was on point for real. Right. Um. <clears throat> That's what the game turned you into. Right. A savage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why when people always come out, victims, I'm like, I ain't trying to hit that. Yeah, at 15, I was a victim. But after so many years. Participating. Participating. I was ruling. I wasn't playing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You were creating victims. Yeah. 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 That, there you go. Um, 
And that goes from what you say you learned from somebody else. I learned, I, and there you go, because the seat, like like they say, bullets ain't got no name. The streets don't have no faces. Yeah. You know, right. because you can be found dead, and the first thing they'll say, prostitute, they're going to hear up and label you right. instead of saying your name. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, they objectify you that way, too. Fast. Quick. You know, um, so being out there for me, um, what was self-esteem, self-worth, and control. I learned that, you know, right. because when I was a child, I didn't have no self-esteem. I didn't have no control. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't have no self-worth. Right. You know, I had none of that. And I had no power. I was powerless. But prostitution is an action, and it gives you power, and it gives you control. It makes you into this savage, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because that's what you have to do to survive. Because you got to think, every time we got in a trick's car, it was a 50-50 chance mm -hmm. we was coming back. Right. I've been held hostage. I've been kidnapped. I've been threw out of cars. I've been raped. I've been stabbed. So many things have happened to me. And, you know, people will look at me and say, well, if she hadn't have been doing what she was doing, this wouldn't have happened. Really? Right. Really? So all that did was really build up a whole bunch of anger and just kept me out there instead of coming in because then nobody understand. You know, no right. one understood. So now, uh, and you, what you're saying is, is some heavy stuff. Like mm -hmm. it's really, you know, we're we're sitting here um, digesting this type of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and it's really, and 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 it's not anything that we haven't heard before, mm -hmm. but hearing it um, coming from you first place is just is crazy. Like it's, mm -hmm. you know, can't wait for the book to come out. <laughs> can't wait for the hey. book. Me book and, coming soon. Yeah, I, me and Leslie had a couple classes together at CCL. Yeah, but I can't wait for the book to come out. Right um, now. Awareness Month, National, is it, uh, now you got me kind of confused with the, because like Give you said. Giving Tuesday? No, 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 so January. it's, it's, uh. it's in no November, right? National Se Sex Trafficking Month, Absolutely. it's November. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of feel like you said that's white collar pimping, basically. Sex trafficking is just the, the same word as, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so you kind of, do you kind of feel like when they put black men in jail, it's pimping and pandering, and then when they put uh, non-blacks in jail, it's kind of sex trafficking? Right. right. And it's funny you say that because I'm getting ready to do a um a presentation and um one of the pimps is white. Mm -hmm. I call him white boy mm -hmm. out of Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Um and he was raised in the hood and he pimping. He's so, still he's still doing it he's now. He's still he's still but, white boy still pimping. But this is the thing, cause see they have the players ball in Chicago. Yes. Right. You know what I'm saying? People I'm I'm looking at people like Go to the player's ball. No. One, why, you want to know everything going over there. Right. Because at some point, yeah. at one point in time in our history, the pimp was looked up to in the black community right. because, right. you know, he right. provided Because they had money. They had money. They, 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 they right. had things. Well, they this go, the community. Yeah, right. And that goes back to the, the poverty thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. When you ain't Correct. got nothing and you see somebody with a little bit of something, mm -hmm. you're going to go towards you're, that. You're going to aspire to that. No matter what it is. There you go. And, and different, there you go. Because you, you don't see a negative thing connected to that because they have stuff when you have nothing. You know, he getting out this big old car, he dressed, you know what I'm saying? He walking up to the kids, giving them five, ten, fifteen control. dollars. And so these children are looking up to this person. Right. Not really understanding the ramifications of how he got that money. Right. And, and it's a you less from a man's standpoint, man to man, it's a less violent mm -hmm. industry. You know, when you're selling drugs and hustling, that's a very violent industry. Mm -hmm. So when you see uh, the fear is they're gonna they're gonna steal your girls, that, right? Yeah, like that, that's your only that, fear that, is that the they're fear, going to yeah. recruit yes. your best people, yeah, yes. right? And that's that's really what you only have to look out for. And if you treat people right, you assume you're gonna keep them. But there's such a big difference between prostitution and solicitation and human trafficking yeah. and pimping and pandering. And, right? and I want to get into that too. So like, what is the keystone differences between prostitution and pimping and then sex trafficking? We're talking about minors, right? We're talking yes. about people who aren't consensually agreeing, right, to that arrangement. Right. And I'm not speaking positively about prostitution or solicitation, right, right, right. but yeah. that's a like like, like she, like Leslie said, they got to a point where it was it was a mm -hmm. uh, that's all they knew, right? And I mean right. that's the thing. So you right. you could start right. right being trafficked at the age of 15, like mm -hmm. Leslie, yeah. but mm -hmm. by the time you're out of it, you're a grown adult, right? 
So the question becomes, did this person consensually become part of this industry? Right. 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 Like the same thing happens with pornography, right? Yeah. Right. We have porn stars that yeah. are making great money and they're doing everything legally, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have child pornography. This right. is mm -hmm. unconsensual. And that's the right. biggest, really biggest difference here. Right. But the issue is socially, we we know we look at black and brown individuals as being three to five years older than they actually are, right? So we're right. out here and we're seeing young black and brown people on the streets and we assume they're not minors. Right. Because we are just groomed socially to look at them and treat them as though they're older. They get in trouble and we say they should know better. Yeah. Because they're actually older than they are. And it's like, no, they're kids. They're yeah. still children, right? And so we, we do that as a social community, right? Mm -hmm. And then we also, we, we have this idea of it all has to stop, right? We can't stop people from consensually participating in something as adults. That's the law's job to stop, right? But we can, as a community, look out and say, look, these people aren't adults, and we're seeing them in places that we shouldn't see children. And those are the red flags, mm -hmm. and we need to do something because you'll never, you'll never be able to stop that process when they're minors if you leave them in there too long. Because it is a gray yeah. area. Mm -hmm. Like it, it is a point where a 17, 16, 17-year-old turns 18, 19, 20, and there's maybe some force or violence there that is let up a little bit, and now they're uh, being manipulated. Mm -hmm. The mind game... Um, they're too deep in the mind game. It's too deep right. in the mind right. game. Right. and So age right. doesn't really dictate that because, like you said, you could be a college student, you get kidnapped. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, uh, and I've always found that um, most... At the time, it's an underlying situation. Right. So someone that's right. stationed. Right. There's something that brought you to that addicts, table. It's basically. something there that somebody's, right. you know, mm -hmm. I, I've worked in a drug rehab for yeah. a long time. And I know that there's usually underlying stuff there. You have to get to the bottom of that. You know, Correct. Like, people, that has to be addressed. You can't address the drug uses without the, the reason to go get the drugs. Right. right. And a lot of times that's happening with um, sex trafficking and prostitution as well. There's something there. Mm -hmm. right. But the person who's getting to the root of it is the wrong person. Is the wrong person. Right? Yeah, right? It's not us as a community going, look, there's something here that's causing this behavior. The pimp, mm -hmm. right? Whoever it is, John, whoever it is, is using that same approach that we should be using to find these these individuals' weaknesses, and then they use that as a target, right? Mm, yeah. So for for them to, to walk up to Leslie and say, oh, you know, you're a runaway, tell me about your family, right? If I asked that question, my, my motives were completely different. Right. Yeah. But the information that I would get is the same as, as he got, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and, and that's the biggest thing is when you're in an environment consistently where, where you're questioning people's motives, and then suddenly someone's asking you a caring question, you're going to want to respond in hopes that it's different until you're in there too long. Is it like because people don't trust the police? Or no. they, they don't trust, like the young kids are taught not to trust the police? Well, the police or? isn't the one coming to offer you buy your lunch, right? Right. Well, you were crying on the corner, right? Yeah. Am I right, Raz? Leslie, the police didn't offer you to buy you lunch. The yeah. police aren't aren't there at that time, right? And That's unfortunately, in some situations, you can't even have a lemonade stand or sell water without getting harassed in certain communities. There you go. Mm -hmm. And in our community, we learned a long time ago not to trust the police. Yep. You, you know yeah. what I mean? Right. And so, I mean, that varies from community mm -hmm. to community. Mm -hmm. But if you come into, in our community... The police are seen as pain, mm -hmm. yeah. lockup. That's what they bring. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I mean, that's what and they bring. And more trauma. Yeah. And more trauma. And then you want to bring a Caucasian social worker up in here. You don't know the language. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't understand the language. Period. And it's sad when we've lived in so much trauma and drama in our lives at an early age that we have a sixth sense, like a wild animal, mm -hmm. and we gonna watch you. Why you sitting there asking us all these questions and we're not going to answer them because in our head already you think you better than us. Yep. So we're not going to give you that info. So ne ne next thing you know, there, this wall is going up. And once this wall go up. Only people that can get around that wall are somebody like you. And, yeah. they, from, and, from your environment. from And I think maybe, and I don't know if, if a good approach, but like you said, your approach is, is great because... You need somebody to be a straight shooter. Mm -hmm. You don't right. need nobody coming in there trying to tell you what to do from, like you said, a social mm -hmm. worker's voice. Right. Or, uh, you know, right. people, especially kids, they respond to somebody who's been through it. And it's funny you say that because um, I mentor some young girls. Um, and it's funny because they're, 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 um, 
caseworkers will call me and be like, Leslie, can you talk to such and such? And I'm sitting there like, that's your job. <laughs> right? <laughs> what do you want me, right. what you want me to do? Yeah. What me to do? Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, Leslie, she won't talk to me. Could you believe? Okay. So I, I'm coming and then I'm talking to this baby. And then she's sitting back. And it's funny because this child is watching me like a hawk. So I already know this baby been living at animal level. So mm-hmm. I already know. So then I have to resort all the way back to the game when I was in it. And I have to get down on her to level. Transform. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You know, yeah, it go like swoop. Here I go. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And next thing you know, she's looking and she'll say, Mama Leslie, can I give you a hug? Just out of nowhere. And just by that hug, then babies know it's genuine. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then I'm off the hip with it. You know, I'm not sitting here with this social work talk and blah, yeah. blah, blah. Nope, we straight street. Right. Game, no game. Let's knock it off. Let's get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they know my story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they know my story. Um, and, and and then once we break that ice, she good. It's like, I want to talk. But the bad part about that is they always want to talk talk to me now. Talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Then somebody said, well, we don't have the funds. What? Yeah. No. Nope. They carry, yeah. carry a lot of burden on your shoulders because it does. They, it be, does because I, I, you know, I, I, I have to help my community. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I have to help my community. And the thing of it is, it's not just my community because you can get an African American woman, then you can get a Caucasian. I can guarantee you they're gonna pay more for that Caucasian than they is for the African American. Mm. So I tell people your gated communities is a praying ground because your babies is gonna bring more money than our babies. Right. Mm. And, you know? and and that's that's one of the biggest issues that I that we've mm. experienced from the commission, right? So we we do this event at Art Prize and we're giving literally just talking to people about the red flags because Art Prize brings a lot of great businesses city yeah. there's a lot of things that they've put into place to protect people but pe- it's it's a lot of new people right yeah. and new people means new business for this mm-hmm. industry yeah. unfortunately right. yeah. so mm-hmm. we're out here handing out magnets and i've got groups of black and brown young mm-hmm. college students mm-hmm. walk mm-hmm. up they want to know mm-hmm. they want the magnet they want to educate themselves mm-hmm. And I had this one woman, um, a white woman, she had probably a daughter who was maybe around 10, walking with her, hand in hand. And I just, I looked at her and I said, hey, can I share some information about human trafficking in our community and and what you need to look out for? And she literally looked at me and said, I don't need any of that. And Mm -hmm. my entire body, like, I had to stop myself from going and saying exactly what Lester just said. Just so you know, your child is worth more on this market Mm -hmm. than a black and brown child. Yeah. So you probably need this more right. than Correct. you ever thought you would. Correct. And, and it's very prevalent. And it's Correct. very prevalent because Correct. what what I'm seeing and 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 I say this from, you know, friends and family members that are in those communities that, you know, have money and mm-hmm. are educated and their kids are getting everything they want and they're not longing for anything else, Correct. right? They want to know what it's like to be in this community. And they they, 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 they want to be to urban, the right? They right. want to they want to learn what, they want some what the kind streets of validation are all about. Right? Right? about right. Right. That, that's right. the move nowadays. It is. The, kid, the kids mm-hmm. come to the inner city like it's a, like it's a tourist ground, right? right. And, but to them, it's so like socially, it's so hype, right? It's mm-hmm. so lit. They want to be part of it. They yeah. want to engage with it. It's they want to know where they're at. Right. right. It's right. boring right. where they're at because they're in gated communities. Right. Right. That's an easy target. Very much. Right. Because they green. What you can offer them is. What you've been doing your whole life, right? And that's, right? How, that's, and how that's what they get, want. That's how right. guys get them too. Like, oh, you like this lifestyle. Yeah. You like this drug. You like this. Oh, album. you want to be in this music video? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, if you love me, do this. Mm-hmm. Let my boy come in right. here. Let, you because know. because they don't know the street, right. right? Right. They think that's real love. Exactly. They don't. To them, they don't know the street, and they don't yeah. know how to act once they're in it. Right. Yeah. So once they're in it, they're stuck in right. the sense that they don't have the same kind of tools. To maneuver it, like Leslie had some tools because she'd experienced some things what? just from being from that community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, these kids don't, and mm-hmm. they are a target. Like, and the mm-hmm. schools, the mm-hmm. schools, you know, everyone wants to kind of stand back and yes. go, "Let's just let it play itself out." Mm-hmm. But that's not a solution here, no, right? Because your kids are targets. Everyone can be yep. right, and it's it's easier when you have a child who's so protected that they don't. Have Think any resources right. or right. skills right. or tools right. to right. deal with it when it happens? They, they don't definitely. even see it. The gate is so good that oh. they, they don't worry about what's inside the gate. Right. They think about what's coming outside. They think if and I the get predator caught, is already there. If I get caught, I've got someone to bail me out. Right, yeah. right. But that shouldn't be your only fear because you literally could be in another country when you get caught. Before you, and you know the funny thing is with that, I have a, I have a, 
uh, had a lady in my program. She had a PhD, and she lived out in Ada. Majority of the women, we've been molested as children. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And this lady was molested by her grandfather, but her parents had enough money to push it up under the rug. Mm -hmm. So what she did was she threw all that trauma and everything else into school, Mm -hmm. but not really working on it. And then it started working on her. Mm -hmm. So next thing you know, she started getting high and then getting high drove her down here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, she hanging out and partying and spending up all this money. And she got tr- she got caught up. I mean, she lost her job, everything else. So she had nothing else to do but to but to hit that block. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and she did just that. You know, she did just that. But she was such an embarrassment to the family and da 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 da. But when she got to us, um, when she got to Sacred Beginnings, you know, I'm talking with her, and I mean, we went down through there, and it was funny how the mother would would come and just just berate her, you know, and I looked at the mother while she's berating her. I was like, you know what? You keep berating her. What did you hide? Yeah. Right. She's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I know. What do you mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. What exactly. are you hiding? Yeah. What because you, 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 yeah. you're you you're stealing so much fear in her right now because she's mm. terrified. Right. Okay. So that means, that tells me that something else is really going on. Mm-hmm. And then when she finally told me and the mother came back again, I said, I said something to the mother about um, that grandfather. She just, so your daughter is this way because of this. You were so busy trying to be a socialite, you weren't paying attention to your child. To your child. Your husband's so busy flying around the country trying to do business and having sex with God knows who mm-hmm. else. Right. You know, but that left the door wide open for a pedophile. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To um, do this to your daughter. Mm. But instead of you apologizing to your child for what you did, you would rather throw, uh, 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 throw it up under the rug and blame her. I said, it's funny how Hocus Pocus plays into this, don't mm-hmm. it? She was like, uh, 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 I lit her up. I promise you I did. Mm-hmm. You know, I already know. I, yeah. I lit her up. I promise you I did. Ain't no passion. There's but always the, a root of trauma. But the thing of it is, this woman now, this woman now has eight years clean. Mm-hmm. You know Beautiful. what I'm saying? Yeah. And the family has, has found it. They're, yeah. they're You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because the mother was so wounded. She called me later like, well, I don't know what to do. What do you mean you don't know what to do? And and that's and that's probably, the grandfather probably had tear over her and the other women in that family too. He probably right. th- mm-hmm. that he was girl, money bags. Yeah, he mm-hmm. had the money, mm-hmm. and so they they wanted to appease him. Mm-hmm. So everybody let him do whatever he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right, because he had the he had the bread and thinking that that eventually that she would outgrow it and wouldn't remember. Right, wrong, mm-hmm. wrong. And let me ask you I'm, this: in certain areas of the country, in certain areas of the world, it's legal. What's your thoughts on that? That really bothers me. Because somebody getting towed off somewhere. So you mean to tell me it's okay for a woman to have sex with six to ten people every day or six days a week and have one day off, knowing what it'll mentally and emotionally do to her. And now, mind you, we have women who be like, I like doing this. I'm all right with doing this. That a, no, not for real. You just ain't hit that trauma. You, you, you just, the issues you just mm-hmm. don't want to work on. You running from it. You mm-hmm. running. But them places, the, the, those, those places like in Nevada. Yeah. Right. Okay. Trust me when I tell you, I've been there too. Somebody getting towed off. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, major. Somebody getting towed off big time. Major. Big time. And when this when this woman is dead, they just go at another one. You know what I'm saying? And, and another one. But you're noticing them better, though, it's majority Caucasians. Mm, they're allowed to make a profit off of it. There you go. There mm. you go. And I've been so because anybody black and brown is going. You get caught up. You going. You going to go uh, straight to prison. And the thing of it is, in Nevada, uh, you black or brown. There's only you like the strip, Mm -hmm. and in some of them casinos, you can't work in them casinos unless one of them men, them high rollers, asks for a black or brown woman. But other than that, there you have to work over here. You can't work over there. It's segregated. Mm -hmm. Mm. 
You can't. And you're right. When they pass those cards, all those flyers for right. the women, mm-hmm. you never. I mean, you do see some black women, but there's usually like a lot of Asian, mm-hmm. um, a lot of white, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. some Latino, and mm-hmm. then some black. Cards. And the only ones you see black though are high yellow. Yeah. You know, they ain't dark dark. Yeah. They high yellow. Yeah. Now me, when I was there. I would pass for like white until I opened my mouth. <laughs> then it was like, <laughs> then it was, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it was like, oh, um, no. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. And I did. I passed for white until I opened my mouth. Because it's a different game. Because a lot of those women are coming from California to Vegas or they've been brought there. Mm-hmm. You're coming from the Midwest. The type of the type of guy that you were under or the situation you were under is totally different. It's totally different. It's also the environments, right? Yeah, the like environments, A woman, yeah. uh, like, for them, right, in, in Vegas, yeah. a, a white woman who's dressed to the nines isn't going to draw attention yeah. in the casino, right? Yeah. Right. And and that's what they're looking for, right? They're yeah. looking that, that that's the environment they're trying to create. Yeah. Right? So it's easier to get away with it. Someone that looks that they would stand out in that environment would be a red flag automatically, right? Like, if you walked into the JW, let's say, downtown, who's, you know, they're great partners and they're making awareness very clear there. Yeah. If you walk in there and you saw someone in the lobby, right, dressed a certain way, out, just kind of looked out. Or lacking certain clothes. Or lacking certain clothes, right? There'd be a difference. You could see someone who's dressed very revealing, yeah. right? But wearing the right clothes. Yeah. And someone who's lacking certain clothes, that's going to be a red flag. That's going to make people uncomfortable. In Vegas, it's easy, right? You, you, th- they can walk in and be sitting at the high roller table, and you're just I know like anybody else. When I had to go to Detroit, and even in um, when they had conventions here, I didn't dress like I dressed when I was on the street. Mm-hmm. I had to totally right. redress myself mm-hmm. and carry myself a totally different way, like the puncher train and all of that in Detroit. So when I was going to them bars in there, um, I had to dress a certain way and I had to act a certain way. You know what I mean? Um, and then the men would come up to you, mm-hmm. you know, and then we were we were trained to get them as drunk as we could get them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, I mean, the game teaches you how to be a chameleon wherever you go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, when you wasn't making no money out here on this track, it's going to be a care band. We finna go to Denver. Um, we finna go to New York. We finna go other places. And every place we went, we had to move different. You right. know what I'm saying? We, we had to move different. We gotcha. had to dress different. We had to you move different. You had to adjust to the climate. I had, there you go. Mm-hmm. I couldn't come out. I couldn't, I couldn't go to New York and get up on a track and act like, I'm running stuff. No, I had to fall back and move a certain way. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, I mean, you would have, you would have six, you would have anywhere from six to 12 pimps. It was so funny now that I think about it. We all in different cars on the same highway going to the same city. Mm. But that's how they moved back then. You, you, you work the circuit and it's called the circuit. You work the circuit. You just didn't stay here. You know, especially when the police got hot here. Right. We didn't stay here. Mm-hmm. You know, we moved. So we, we're we almost out of time. We're going to have to wrap some stuff up. But I, I'm, I'm interested to ask you this question. All right. Because we know that with the age of social media, mm-hmm. the Internet mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. just, you know, they bring glamour to some things that, right. that you know, right, right. you have a situation like somebody like Cardi B. She was a stripper. You know, she also said that she used to go out, have uh, have sex with men for money, but then also drug them and rob them and do all of that stuff. Do you think that kind of message or realness, does it, does it help or hurt? Because in, I know somewhere in this, in this country, in this city, it's a young girl... Who who sees that and says, "Well, damn, she had to go through all of that to get here." Right, right, right. I think Cardi B needs to do de- one thing about Cardi B. She real, but I think she needs to deliver her message a little different. I agree. You know, I agree. I like I like her being open. I like her being honest, and I love her being real. I and love owning, that. And owning and she it. Owning yeah. that. Yeah. But she need. But she needs to understand. 
you got young girls looking at you now, okay? And and they're thinking in order to be another Cardi B, they got to go through all this. I think she needs to deliver her message just a little bit different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To teach young women, you don't have to go the way I went. Right. You know what I'm saying? And give them, show them another route to go. Just mm-hmm. because you went that way don't mean everybody's going that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. You know, I have women who look up to me and be like, Leslie, I remember when you was out there, I looked up to you. I'm like, man, don't look up to what? Look right. up to pain? No, mm-hmm. no. So I'm trying to teach them how to maneuver a different way. And that's what Cardi B needs to do. Right. Now, she cold with it. I love it. But I don't like that her story don't have... The trauma in it. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the trauma in it yeah. or or or, or um, some kind of way to show young women how to go another way. Right. You know, you don't have to go my way. I went my way because of such, 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 such. Mm-hmm. She don't go deep with it. Right. She'd have yeah. cropped out. Yeah. Right. She'd have cropped out how a lot of times, pieces and parts. Right. right. So how she ain't going through the happen? trauma. Right. She ain't going what through her trauma with it. And then again, she might not have dealt with it. And But even even that mm-hmm. robbing stuff, mm-hmm. that, that, that drug and stuff slipped out. Right. She didn't say that on purpose. That kind of slipped out. Yeah. So, but that's real with the game. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it happened. And so, the question so, is, maybe that wasn't the first time, right? Other things right. could have happened to her before that Definitely. point. She, she it, said some things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to follow her before she blew up. Yeah. And she said some other things that, like, yo, like this is a part of. Because she worked in a strip club in New York. Right. You mm-hmm. got to deliver the whole message, though. Right. Right, you have to. And in order to people understand and, it. But you can't be embarrassed about it. If you're no. selling sex, yep. tell them about when you were selling sex when you were a stripper. Yep. You know what right. I mean? Right, right, you're selling right. sex for the music now. So, so mm-hmm. let me, for people that are that's out there listening, mm-hmm. and they may be hearing your message, hearing your story, and they need that last little connection. What are the words you're going to drop to the people so they can, you know, what would you like to say to folks who are listening right now, right now that may need that hug, that virtual hug? What What is it that you want to say to these people? We here. We here. Yeah. All you got to do is reach out. Reach out. All you got to do is make that phone call to me. Make that phone call to my team, and I promise you we here. You know, we mm-hmm. here. We understand. We've been there. We've done that. Help is around. And, uh, yeah, help is around. All you got to do is reach out. Once you reach out, just grab my hand, baby, and I got you. How do they we'll take it from you? there. Yeah, and that's what I was, um, that was the lead up. You can, um, my direct number is 616-443-6233. Or my website, which is S as in Sam, B as in boy, T as in Tom, P as in Paul, dot org. You can go there. Um, on my website, I did a four and a half minute video of my life story that's taken all kind of gold addies and it went national. And out, I think, 37 or 40,000, we took second. Okay. That that the video took second. Oh, wow. So they can they can go there and, and they can reach us there. How do we okay. get money? They can give money. They can go to... Um, to our site, we have we have a donation button, okay, and they can donate there. All funds go, all monies that come in go to the go to the safety and wellness of the women. Um, it don't go to staff, it don't go to none of that because we don't have no staff. I'm the only staff. You the staff. <laughs> <laughs> we are the very first peer mentored. Uh, program in the state of Michigan, survivor led mm. peer mentor program in the state of Michigan. Um, also, October seventeenth. At 6 p.m. at the Bluffs will be our very first gala. Okay. And you know what? We did it free mm-hmm. because we want you to come and hear success stories. Right. Mm-hmm. We ain't charging you. We want you to come free. But we want you to leave there with a donation, leaving donations knowing where your money is going. Absolutely. And get us the information. We'll yeah. We'll, our, our website. So, so, our, so the okay. information, the website, and the, the gala, all of that is going to be on the Magic 104.9 social media page as well as the Two Bright Guys uh, social media page. So you can find that in both of those places. Yes. Where else can they get any more information as far as what we have been discussing today? So with the um, City of Grand Rapids Working Commission on Human Trafficking, the biggest thing we want you guys to do is if you see the red flags, if you're out there, even if it doesn't lead to anything, make the phone call. You can make it anonymously. You can Mm -hmm. provide your information. It's really up to you. The number is simple. It's 1-888-373-3333. 
888-7888. Um, if you want any other information for schools, setting up training for teachers, um, contact us at the City Hall. So contact the City. Commissioner Lanier has done a really good job at putting a group of people together that we will give you some guidance. Yes, Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. Get on the City website. Shout it's Everything's the on there. Yeah, she's done a really good job at, at yes, putting has. all that awareness out there. Um, the biggest thing is keep your eyes out. Mm-hmm. Look for the red flags. Mm-hmm. And make the phone call one eight 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 seven. Sorry, three seven three seven eight eight eight. Um, and push the schools to get some training for people. Correct. Yep. Correct. And give to Sacred Beginnings because honestly, Absolutely. Leslie, right now, yeah, she um, she has done. She's capable of doing something that none of us can do, and she can't do it without her help, right? Um, she's on the ground. Her, she's talking to these girls. She's getting them safe homes. She's out here looking for people, literally, mm-hmm. in her van. Mm-hmm. And I'm terrified for her half the time. Um, but she's doing the hard work, so the least we can do is tell people and send some support to her, right? Absolutely. Yes, Whatever yes. you need, girl. And Thank when, you. When's that book coming out? As a matter of fact... Um, I was gonna say that. To be announced. I've been, <laughs> no, I've been offered, I've been offered a book deal. I've been approached for a book deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're in negotiations with that right now. Yeah. Beautiful. So that is good. That's Congratulations. Really, that's good. That's Thank good. you. Anybody I want to give a shout out to before we wrap up? Um, shout out to every community organization, every community business that has supported us with the work that we're doing at the Human Trafficking Working Group. Um, and honestly, shout out to the people who come to those meetings. We all have busy lives, and it's nice to have this variety of people and the things that we can do. And shout out to you guys, two bright guys, for giving right. us a chance. Right. Yes, thank you. And for, for Leslie coming. for building yeah. survivors for us, so that we have Absolutely. some people to really look up to. What, now, if anybody wants to join your group, can they join? Yes. Yeah, so um, like I said, we're looking for people from different areas. Uh, If you want to join the group, again, get on the city website, contact the working group, Commissioner Lanier's office. She will make sure you get the information. Okay. Okay. Ms. Leslie, anybody want to give a shout-out to or? You know what? I want to give a shout-out to my mother, Mm. for real. Because when I couldn't pray for myself, my mother stayed praying for me. Mm. Um, For my family members who kept praying for me when I couldn't pray for myself. That's who I want to give a shout out to. Because if it wasn't for my family, it wouldn't be no Leslie. Right, wrong, good, bad, and different. You know what I'm saying? That's my family. That's who I want to give a shout out to. And to the women of, women of Sacred Beginnings, I'm proud of you. And to, survi- to survivors across the United States um, and other countries, keep doing what you're doing, sisters, because we're making a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, ladies... We appreciate y'all coming and, and sharing this information. Leslie, thank you for sharing your your, your story with us. Um, I hope that people listening can um, start asking questions, start being more involved and active, whether it's your children, right. uh, your children's other friends, children's right. friends other family members, right. uh, folks in your neighborhood, because, I mean, it takes a village. That, correct. Yeah. So... You got to do your part. And like I said, we're going to put the website up on the, up on uh, the two, two Bright Guys social media page. Please support this cause. Donate whatever you can give. Right. So. Do you take supplies too? If somebody yes, wants to drop supplies do. off? Yep. Okay. Um, we're always in need of supplies um, as far as hygiene items, um, toilet paper, dishwashing liquid, whatever someone can bring. We would. Greatly appreciate that. All right. Absolutely. Um, we are with the city. We're going to release this PSA that's going out. There's going to be some videos. Yep. Um, they will be on their, on your website as well, right? Yep. Yes. And we're so, going to play it during the show. Awesome. So please share those. Share them with everyone you know. Share the information. Share these clips. Yes. Because yes. they're really just about um, their, their words from survivors, their words from parents of survivors, family members. Um, it's a way to, for you to actually understand where how this impacts our own community and the more we share that information right. the more we get it out the more people we reach the better we are at solving it right. agreed right. well thank you again ladies for coming on the show we really appreciate your time and your stories and the information so folks check out the uh the social media sites we'll have all the information there and as always thank you ladies thank you everybody thank you. Uh, for listening and we'll check y'all out later
How did the trafficking begin? The trafficking began um, at the age of 15. I was a 15-year-old runaway. Where was the trafficking happening? The trafficking happened right here in Grand Rapids, Michigan on South Division. What was happening in your life leading up to being trafficked? Very dysfunctional home. My father was an alcoholic. My mother was a workaholic. And at the age of eight, I was molested by a relative. Did drugs play a role in the situation? Drugs did not play a role in my situation of being trafficked. Um, it was by force, coercion and force um, and fear. But the women I work with today, a lot of them have been through serious drug addictions and been pimped out due to drug addictions. What advice would you give to yourself prior to the experience? The advice I would give to myself would be to tell someone, talk about it, whatever's going on, whatever was going on in my life at that time, I should have talked about it, not been afraid. Yeah. 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 Education is the key. Don't be, I want people to be aware, but not afraid. I want them to understand the warning signs. I want them to keep a, a good lookout. Um, know what your children are doing on the internet. Know their friends. Um, people are looking on the internet and they're looking for men. Look for women because that's who's coming for your child. They're gonna befriend your child and then they're gonna sell your child. So just be aware. That's the truth. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs>